River is an ace and we face a little pot bet here on the river and to start out, you guys already know what's gonna happen as the video is themed river raises. Hi there fellow poker players and welcome back to the Poker Ambition channel and to another video where this time I'm going to be taking a look at river raises. Again, we will most likely not have much, so let's hope they get through. If you haven't seen any of the other videos where we were talking about dunk betting or triple barreling, go check them out. And remember that if you learned something, give this video a like, also subscribe as we have more videos coming up. And without further ado, let's get into the hands. So the first hand, we are playing three-handed with Born to Tilt and Kacha at 25.50. We get raised, there is a little ante involved, so he raises a little bit bigger. I defend with the Jack-8, so far pretty standard. He checks, I decide to check back, uh, can kind of go either way. The turn is uh, 10, which is an interesting turn, and Kacha decides to go for a delay. Um, we could do two things here in my opinion. We could either call or race. Um, I don't think folding is really an option. I decided to call already a little bit with the idea in mind that I could potentially raise the river uh, as I do like my hand for it. River is an ace and we face a little pot bet here on the river. And to start, a, you know, guys already know what's gonna happen as the video is themed river raises, we decided not to fold and we decided to throw out a little race. In terms of sizing, I went for 3K. Um, it's it's kind of interesting here. If he just bets three quarters, I think we have an easy race. That's not a win. And now it becomes quite dicey. How thin do we want to race still for value? Uh, the ace kickers now don't really play anymore so you could almost say that we're basically only raising king 10 plus and that could actually go just for an over bet or uh, for a big race sizing like an all-in sizing i decided to go for a little smaller race uh let's hope uh, katja didn't uh, uh didn't see through it he indeed didn't uh and he folded nicely i think he for example he could also have the same hand as me and then, you know, if we both have Jack-8, it's whoever puts the most money in the pot last kind of wins. And luckily in this time, in this case, that was me. We face a race, we defend in the big blind versus under O. Okay, flop, as we flop a flush draw and an overcard. Phase one towards Seabed, we check up. Turn is a queen. Under O checks, river is a 10. Now we kind of have the debate, should we bet or check? In general, I think a 10, it's, it's maybe a little bit weak. I think if I had a queen or better, I could definitely see myself value betting. I think uh, with the 10, I think checking is maybe better. He bets three quarters and I decided to jam it in. And this is actually a quite common line to do a lot of check raising. I think I have some more lines where basically your opponent sort of is capping himself. Um, like I don't think he has jack nine or six nine all that often. I also don't think he has a flush all that often. Uh, Ace jack is a possibility, which I don't think also he c bets all that often. Pocket tens is less likely as we now have a 10. Ace jack is also less likely because we now we have a blocker to that. So in general, all these ingredients will lead you to do quite a lot of raising. Uh, and it's not like we, uh, we have an enormous amount of bluffs here, uh, because let's say for example, we had the ace of hearts with the five of clubs, we would have most probably betted the river ourselves. So the good thing about a bluff like this is that we have to be turning a, a, a made hand into a bluff as if, we, as if we had nothing we were more likely to bet the river ourselves. So that's why I think this spot in general could get a little bit more credit or in general river race spots where it's unlikely that you have complete air uh, are quite good spots in my opinion to bluff race. And he indeed folded. So we win, win a nice little pot here. We have ace nine, the small band limps in. We decided to raise it up and the small bet calls. 
Six, eight, ten boards. Check, check. Don't think it's a board I'm gonna be C betting all that much on. If the small blind limp calls, I think it connects okay with his limp calling range. Um, as that's more in the middle, and my isolation range is a little more, bit more like middle, top, and bottom. So, and in general, I think A9 is a fine hand to check back. We face a block, which I think we have an easy call or race. I just have to call. And the river is a king, and he decides to barrel, and now I decide to race. And basically, what's going on here is it's mainly a blocker play, I would say, as we're blocking 7 9, as we're blocking jack 9, as we're blocking ace jack. Basically, we're blocking all the potential strong hands in Villain's range. You could also say that he is maybe a little bit capped. For example, a hand like Ace Jack um, would most likely not always limp call. If he had Ace Jack suited, he could limp raise. Or if he has an Ace Jack in general, he could maybe raise the flop. So I think also not combo wise, he is a little bit reduced. Uh, King Queen, I think it also makes sense for us to play this way. In terms of bluffs, uh, yeah, we should then maybe turn and like ace eight or something in the bluff. But then again, we can also just call versus a seven or ace nine and win. Um, so I don't think we have that much hands that could be bluffing. Maybe hand like pocket nines uh, could be an okay candidate. But then again, that's also an okay candidate to call. Um, and ace nine, not a great candidate to call, obviously. He fortunately did decide to call and he had king 10. Well, not much we can do there. We could have maybe in terms of race sizing with our exact hand go bigger. So we're literally blocking all the straights. This is probably like the dream hand to just shove um, and put like a hand like king 10 in a quite a tough spot. Um, because basically king 10 now becomes a bluff catcher. Uh, king jack would probably then be a better call than a hand like king 10. So good race i like the way i played my hand but i think on the river we were a little bit uh, bop, 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 a little bit chicken should have just maybe ripped our stack in i think that would have been a better play especially like if especially that he went block turn bet big river he is saying that he's like king jack plus i would say um so versus a range like that, I think raising bigger makes more sense. Let's say when block block, then I think raising smaller makes a little bit more sense. Um, as we are gonna also raise a little bit of a wider range for value. That for example would include King Jack. We face a raise on the button. We call Queen 10 off in the small blind. Little bit loose, little bit loose. But you know, we came to play some poker. Not came there to sit around. We decided to draw a little dunk bet while well, we had a dunk bet video earlier. If you haven't seen that one, make sure to check that out. He calls. On the turn, we decide to check. Okay, we could block again, but yeah, there's probably not a lot of value in there. We definitely don't want to get raised. So I think check calling is a fine strategy with this hand. He checks as well. River is an ace. I again don't think we have a value bet, so then it becomes a check. He bets, and I think now the discussion is do we call or do we raise? And given the trend of this video, spoiler alert, I did make a raise. This time I went a little bit bigger, as I guess I'm saying I have 10 jack or better, I would say, or ace jack or better. I think ace jack is definitely a hand that I could bet, flop, check, turn. Same when I had like ace 10. Pocket threes could be, but I think it's a little bit more likely. I'll bet that on the turn myself. So I'm mainly going in towards that region. I think King Queen, I would most likely bet myself as well, but could be perceived as a trap. And um, again, with the 10, we're blocking like his best ace. I would say ace 10 is a hand that he could often play this way. Um, so yeah, I definitely like my play here. And he did indeed fold. We face a min raise from the button. Mr. Zephyr, shout out to Mr. Zephyr. Hardcore grinder. Ace queen three flop. Check check. And this is like I said, this is gonna be also a common a common spot. The check check bets or the bet check bet are 
common spots to throw out uh, a check raising strategy. And I think this is a classic example of that again. I think a hand like 10 jack is likely to have bet in either flop or turn. Uh, I think his best hand that he has now on the river is pocket eights. That's very likely to play this way. Or well, I have an eight, so that's already less likely. Again, it's a spot where if I check the river, I most likely have something of showdown value. If I have complete nothing, I'm more likely checking. Also, if I have complete nothing, like five, six or something, I wouldn't do this because you're kind of blocking his bluffs. So it makes it less likely for him to bluff and you're not bluffing, blocking any of his call range. So basically those two factors will make uh, his bet full percentage go down, which is obviously bad for the EV of your bluff. Um, and I'm blocking, I think even ace eight is most likely not playing this way. Queen eight could be, um, but yeah, overall blocker, he is quite capped um, and we are still uncapped. So I think in general, this is probably the most classic example of throwing out a lot of river raises. We're gonna stick here with the Jack-8. We get dealt the Jack-8 back to back. And we're gonna play a little pot against Mr. OTB. OTB limps in, bats the flop, as he's gonna do with a high frequency. We obviously have a continue. He bats the turn, which I think he's also gonna do at a high frequency. And we again have a continue. And the river, the flush completes, and he decides to block. Um, I mean, basically, the, sort of the same trend continues. I did actually, however, decide to go for a little bit of a smaller race. And this is kind of what I talked about earlier. Basically, when he's blocking, he's saying that he's still sort of value betting thin. Um, and I'm, for example, saying that I'm still raising a hand like 10-8 here, or even, no, do say it, I'm probably folding the turn. Let's say I have a hand like 10-8. I'm saying that I'm still raising that and this way also my blocker is quite relevant. It's less likely that he has a straight, it's less likely that he has a flush. Um, so in general, again, due to the blockers, his full percentage will go up. Did we bluff the OTB? That is the question. Did we manage to bluff him? Or maybe we had the best hand in this case. That could have definitely also been the case. Um, shout out to the OTB. But we did uh, win the pot. King Queen, we open the button, a centric defense in the big blind. Flop is a7, deuce rainbow. He checks, we check behind. Uh, I think this is a fine candidate for a check back. Turn is a 10, we can easily call the turn out if he bets, but he doesn't, he checks again. I think no reason to bet, as we still have quite a lot of showdown value. And River is a 10 again, and now it kind of gets interesting. We face a big pet and I decide to go for a very big raise. And again, it's kind of optimal use of blockers. Uh, I block his strongest king 10 and queen 10. So basically due to my blockers, I'm allowed to go quite big. I am, in terms of uncappedness, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think he could definitely still have sevens, deuces, which I don't have. I can have aces, which he doesn't have. Um, yeah. But I think mainly if he has a 10, like a low 10, he's in quite a lot of trouble. So I think king queen exactly is probably the nut combination here to throw out some raises some of the time. And obviously there's still uh, a chance of the fact that he was just bluffing. I could also call this hand. This hand is actually a little bit more interesting than let's say if I had a hand like five, six of spades. Five, six of spades obviously cannot call. So the raise, I can just make a little small raise and doesn't, if it just works enough, then it's fine. But here also, obviously I can call. So my raise basically has to be better than my call. So you could also make an argument for calling here, I would say. Um, and maybe raise like your Jack Queen, if I had that. But that's kind of the problem. Why do you, most likely I've, I would have had bet that on the turn or maybe on the flop. And he, he indeed folds. Um, and I think King 10, Queen 10 are definitely hands that I can play this way. So I think the story definitely checks out. King 10, we open the button, get called by the big blind. Face a check, as we learned, a port that could have been dunk bet from the other position. He didn't. Don't know if he has a dunk bet strategy. Uh, if he doesn't dunk bet, his range is still intact. If he does have a dunk bet strategy, maybe we could already start reducing some hands in his range. 
I decided to go for a bat, three quarters, a bit big actually. Nowadays it would maybe size a little bit smaller on this board, but I don't think it's bad. He calls, turn is a 10, definitely a spot that I'm going to be barreling. Draw towards the nuts. He calls again. And the river is a 10. Now it actually gets interesting. Tino dunks out the river. Maybe he has seen our videos. Um, and it's an interesting spot. As I think he is correct for dunking. Not sure though about sizing. Um, I think a smaller sizing could maybe be a bit more appropriate. Uh, as he doesn't have the real nuts in his range. Basically on the flop I went three quarters. I think king, queen, maybe with a heart could be peeling. That's true. Uh, is it le is it leading the river? Not sure. Um, an eight is definitely could definitely lead the river. A bluff could definitely lead the river. Let's say yes, a six or uh, a flush draw that that missed, or maybe he's just turning like a seven six into a bluff. These are all possible um, possible scenarios. So I decided the fact that it's very likely for him, unlikely for him to have a hand like king queen. I have. A blocker to 10 eights so i do block some eights i guess for what it's worth um, but mainly i think if he had if he has a bluff uh, again obviously with the 10 i am beating a bluff but i just don't think he has he has king queen and i don't think this line is very popularly bluffed by the imposition like you you need some balls to bluff raise this river <laughs> a little bit narcissistic maybe but uh yeah, let's see if Dino, if Dino maybe wants to respond in the comments what he had. He did indeed fold. Probably a very likely chance that I just had the best hand, but maybe he did indeed fold an eight. I also think, by the way, in terms of queen eight, uh, he doesn't have queen eight. Uh, I can have queen eight, I can have king queen. So again, I raise the river from a perspective of, um, I have a lot of knotted hands that you don't have. And this is also why he should be careful uh, throwing out big dunk bets on the river as we have discussed in the dunk betting video. So these were some river race spots. I hope you enjoyed them. Don't think we really lost uh, a lot of them. Um, I would almost say that maybe I was, because I think they were very good examples, but in my database, I found only very good examples, which actually could be, um, could be a tell that I maybe should be a little bit less strict with my criteria for making a river race so maybe this is actually something i'll take in consideration uh in general i hope that this video and all the other videos as well is gonna give me a little bit extra action on my river uh, aggression so i'm gonna make a lot of money indirectly out of these videos as i will definitely lower my bluffing frequencies a little bit uh i hope you liked this video and again like always poker ambition cannot be held responsible guys for any river raises that you make that don't go through don't go send us a bill don't send your lawyer towards us um, small disclaimer but other than that guys do try to take away something from these videos good spots to river race and increase your frequency in the right spots with the right hand okay make sure to not miss them Thank you very much. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe, follow us on basically anything that you can follow us on. And I'll see you guys in the next video.